my friends, my name is Kat and I'm the children's librarian here at the Tewksbury Public Library. Welcome to this week's Art Not Craft video, where every week we look at a different artistic medium and see what you need to know to play around with it and see if it's something you want to do. This week we're going to be playing with polymer clay. So what is polymer clay? Well, there's a lot of different types of clay out there. Some of it you need a special kiln to bake and keep your designs. Some of it dries when you leave it out in the air. Some of it never dries at all. Polymer clay doesn't dry in the air, but it will dry if you bake it in the oven. So you can keep your things if you want, but also if you leave it for a while and come back to it later, it's pretty much still good. You can get it either in large bricks. This is about half of a brick of one pound of white clay, and you can also get terracotta and like a tan. Or you can get it already colored. You can get pretty much any color there is. There are so many. There are glow-in-the-dark ones. There are ones with sparkles in it. I usually use the Sculpey brand. You can use Sculpey, Fimo. There's a whole bunch of different brands of polymer clay. You can also buy a kit this is one we happen to have here at the library that comes with all the different colors in it. This one has a book attached with it and it'll teach you how to make all kinds of little charms and things, but really it's up to you. Um, you can also mix the colors together. So if you wanna start with just white or you know, yellow, blue, red, and white, and you can mix whatever colors you want, you probably want black as well, um, these are not expensive. These are probably about a dollar to two dollars, depending on where you're shopping. So it's worth the investment if you're gonna give it a try. You can bake them in your regular home oven, so you don't have to worry about any kind of specialized equipment and keep your things forever. Sculpey is really great too, because you can um, sand it, you can paint it, <laughs> you can do all kinds of things with it once it's already baked and it's completely up to you what you want to do with it. Now, I went online and was looking at a lot of tutorials for beginners for polymer clay just to make sure I didn't forget anything, and a lot of them want you to have all kinds of special stuff. And I'm here to tell you, I have been sculpting in polymer clay for about 25 years, and I'm not exaggerating. Um, you don't need special stuff. You need clay, you need an oven to bake it in, um, and a sh cookie sheet to bake it on, and I always put down aluminum foil to make sure that my baking sheet stays clean. This is non-toxic, but it can give off fumes. So you wanna make sure if you're going to be doing this a lot, you might want a dedicated toaster oven. Um, but if you do just once in a while, really your regular oven is fine. You don't need any special sealers. You don't need any special tools. This is supposed to be fun. Most polymer clay will come in a two ounce package like this, which is sectioned off into four half ounce sections, just for the ease of breaking off a piece and using it. Um, if you end up getting a multi-pack with a bunch of different ones, they usually come with about half that, so one ounce of clay in each of your colors. This doesn't look like a lot, but a little bit goes a really long way when it comes to polymer clay. And again, you can mix your colors together, so get whichever ones strike your fancy, but don't worry too much because we can change them to be exactly what you want. When you're ready to store them, keep them in the original package if you can. If you have a large chunk like this where my package won't fit over the top, I just put it in a Ziploc bag. And then I keep everything stored in a Tupperware. I'm embarrassed to show you the state of my Tupperware because like I said, I've been doing this for a really long time and I have a lot of little bits and bobs here. But that's okay, that's really all you need. And as we said before, my art is not supposed to be intimidating. This is what I use. This is what anybody really needs. If you want to buy tools, you can find them in the art supply store next to the clay. You'll probably find a set something like this. Um, these are double-sided, so the round ends help you to make indents, but also will smooth out fingerprints and things. There's this long, sharp one, which helps with detail work. Um, the rollers on the sides, you can see, are kind of bumpy to help you roll things out like a rolling pin. Um, there's some different ends on this side to, again, help with different indents you want to make. You really don't need these. Um, if you want them, you can get them and they are useful, but you can use toothpicks, you can use plastic cutlery, whatever you have lying around. 
as I said, I have been doing this for a really long time and it was only in the last couple years that I ended up buying these tools. And I do use them, as you can see, there's some clay kind of stuck on there, but they're useful, but not necessary. The first thing you wanna do with your clay is condition it. And what that means really is you're just gonna knead it and squish it until it's nice and soft and pliable, and you can do with it what you want to do with it. Um, when you first get the bricks, they're really, really hard. Just break off a piece and keep working on it. It'll come, don't worry. You do not need a special machine for this. You can get one that looks like a pasta roller or you can actually use a pasta machine if you have one. But again, it's really not necessary um, unless you're doing some real big commercial enterprise with your clay. Just break off a small piece and use it. You can also mix colors together. I'm gonna make some more pink. So I have some white and some red here, and it's exactly the same thing. You're just gonna keep squishing it together until it becomes all one color. Or if you want it to be marbled, you can make that marble look, keep rolling it and folding it until it looks like what you want it to. Um, as for your workspace, anything again is fine. If you want to put down newspaper or anything, to protect anything that you have that's really nice. This is a craft room table, so I'm not overly concerned. And I have an art table at home, which again has paint splatters and clay things on it. Um, but some of the colors can leave a mark that's really hard to get off, if not impossible. So if you have nice furniture, you really wanna make sure that you protect your workspace. The only color that I generally have that leaves a mark is red. I'm not sure why, <laughs> but the red, tends to leave a mark behind. So you wanna make sure that you um, protect your area because you don't want everything to be covered in red. Likewise, if you're using a lot of red, this didn't happen here because I have other colors, but it can sometimes stick to your hands. So if you're using red and you're switching to especially like a white or a yellow lighter color, you'll wanna wash your hands between colors just because red can stick. But even just this pink, you can see is totally fine. And there, our pink is already beautifully pink just after that amount. It really doesn't take long. Now you can make little charms and all sorts of things. I'm gonna show you quickly how to make a little sculpture, which is what I generally do because I think they're fun. I have made a lot of necklaces and things as well. Um, it just depends what you're in the mood for. I'm gonna pinch off a piece here and I'm just gonna roll it. I have decided I'm gonna make a teddy bear. So. He's kind of round, just rolling him on the table a little bit, but he has a little bit of a belly. So it's kind of like a teardrop shape here. And we'll sit him down, try to make it so that you can see him. I'm gonna take a smaller piece than that and roll ahead. And just stick it right on. If you want to, if you want this to look like it's all one piece, you can go through, go around with your fingers and connect those two pieces. If this is going to be a larger piece, you can also put something in there, a piece of wire or a toothpick or something to make it more sturdy and stable. My little figures are usually small enough that I don't have to worry about that. If you are making something bigger, you don't want to go too much thicker with clay than this. Um, you can make an internal structure out of tin foil and make sure you cover it with clay. And you want to make sure you have at least a quarter inch of clay because otherwise it can, you can see the tin foil through sometimes and that's no fun. All right, I'm making two little ears and I just took one piece and split it in half so that I know they're going to be the same size. And just make a little rounded shape. Here we go. That's a little big, but you know what? That's okay, I think he's cute. And stick it on there. Got a little crease there, just rub it out with your finger. Oops, I got a little bit of pink there, so I'm gonna take that off, that's okay. Again, you just smooth everything out with your finger or with a tool if you have one. We're gonna take a little bit more and make some cute little bare feet. Just make a little oval shape and have his feet sticking out in front. I don't know about you guys, I find this very relaxing. Um, 
to just kind of sit and relax and make something that comes together. It doesn't matter what you're making, really. You just want to break it down into shapes. So we have little ovals for the feet. We had a circle for the head. I'm going to make little arms here, which again is just an oval. It's a little thicker at the paw end than at the shoulder. And you can stick it right on at the side. And I'm going to rub that in. Um, they do make special liquid clay that you can use, which helps to stick your items together. I honestly haven't made anything that's that's big and important that it really needs that. You're welcome to try it. It's a little bit expensive, but if you are making larger pieces, it could be really worth it. And again, we're going to put that right on the other side. That's a little bit bigger. We'll just pinch a piece off. Not a big deal and roll that together into a little log, tapered at one end. Here's his little arm. And I'm gonna have him holding something. So I'll put his arms kind of going forward. There we go. And let's smooth down in the back so we can get rid of any wrinkles. So we have our little bear shape. I'm gonna take a lighter brown and make a muzzle for his nose. See, a little bit goes a long way. That's really big. We need like half of that. And I find that I do that a lot. I start with a bigger piece and then I just end up taking away and taking away until I just have a little tiny bit left. I'm gonna flatten that out so we have a little circle for the nose right there for the muzzle. And I have some black here and I'm gonna make a little triangle for the nose. You can see what I'm doing. It's just a little flat circle. I'm going to flatten, pinch it between my fingers to make the pointy end and push it down. It makes a little triangle, flatten it out, see? And then decide which one it weighs is the top and just attach it right on there. And there, see, we have our little bear face. I am going to use the tool. You can use a toothpick for this and just make two little eyes. For whatever reason, I always tend to make my eyes really close together. That's just my style. And I'm gonna take some more of this brown just a little bit to put in inside his ears, just a little circle there. Oops. Buff out that little crack, no problem. A little circle for the ears. why the inside of a bear's ears is a little bit round and then just push that in again I'm using the tool because I have the tool if you don't have the tool it's really okay use what you have and sometimes that's just your fingertips and that's okay too all right and then I'm gonna put some more on the bottoms of his feet so he'll have some little foot pads if you want to take the time, um, you can put little toes on there as well. That would be really adorable. There we go. So we have our little teddy bear. I'm going to take some of this pink that we just made, and I'm going to make a little heart. So, like a circle, I'm going to kind of flatten it out. And we know it's pointed at one end, right, and pushed in in the middle. There we go. And just keep shaping it until it looks like you want it to. You can use your fingernails. There we go. I'm going to push it down a little bit so it gets more of the rounded on the top and then a little bit more pinched at the bottom so it's a little more stylized of a heart shape. And then we're going to give it to the teddy bear to hold. So I'll move his arm out. It's a little bit big for him, but that's okay. And there we have our little teddy bear with a heart. Now you can really make anything you want out of clay. Um, you just have to break it down into shapes. For some reason, I like making tiny food. I'm going to take some of this lighter brown and 
make it nice and warm so that it's conditioned. I was already playing with this, so it didn't take long. And I'm gonna make this into a nice flat triangle. There we go. Doesn't that look nice? It has a ridge at one end. I'm gonna make myself a slice of pizza. I'm gonna have some red sauce. And again, you probably don't need a lot. Make it into a flat triangle. A little bit goes a really long way. And this doesn't have to be perfect because pizza never looks exactly perfect anyway. But there we go, we have a little, some red sauce to put on our pizza. Pull that off to the side here. This is more of a deep dish. And then I have some yellow. Uh, if I was making this as something real special, I probably would mix the yellow to get kind of a more cheesy color. This is pretty neon, but you know, this is all supposed to be fun. And again, we're gonna make this into a nice triangle kind of shape. It doesn't have to be perfect because since when does cheese on pizza ever look perfectly triangular? And lay that right on top. There we go, kind of dripping down the sides a little bit. You can take some green to make little tiny peppers. And again, I pinched off a little tiny bit and I still need about like half of that. Little tiny shapes. You can work in really good detail with this, especially if you use a tool or a toothpick to put things exactly where you want them. There we go. And then if we wanna add some more topping, we'll say I have some red, we'll make some little tiny pepperonis just for the color of it. And you can make whatever you want a little bit bigger. Um, just remember that you need to break it down into the basic shapes that you see. You don't have to put all the red sauce on the bottom there. See, we covered it all up. There's not much point to doing it, except I know it's there and it's peeking out from the sides. So I think it was worth it, but it's totally your call. Um, I've made little sandwiches and little pies and all sorts of little things out of clay. Uh, I don't know why I like making food. I like making animals. Those are the two things that I tend to make the most when I'm when I'm playing with clay. There we go. We'll have that one kind of falling off the side. And there we have our tiny slice of pizza. Now that these are done, we want to bake them in the oven. And any oven at all, I'm going to put them on a cookie sheet lined with tin foil or parchment paper, um, 275, for 15 minutes per quarter inch. So this is probably about a quarter inch, 15 minutes will be fine. This is a bit thicker, it might need longer. I would go in kind of five minute increments. Um, he'll probably need about half an hour because he is much thicker than a quarter of an inch. If you want to do even longer than that, you can just check him after five minutes. And the easiest way to tell is when you take him out of the oven, find a place where you can't see and kind of put your fingernail in. You'll see that my nail right now is going way in it will not do that. It'll go in just a little tiny bit and you'll know that he is ready to come out. One other thing I like about polymer clay is that it's really, really good at holding a texture. It will not shrink back down once you've put something on it. You can use anything at all that you want. Paper towels make really pretty fish scales, as does the waffle print on my shirt. Isn't that pretty? and that will hold until you take it off. This might get squished out, so if you want to put something onto a design, you might wanna make it into a fish shape first and then add the texture. You can also just use whatever you have lying around. I have some yarn, I'll squish it on, try it out and see. That looks pretty cool. And see what textures you can come up with and what it makes you think of to make a sculpture out of. Now for cleanup, I don't know if you can tell, but I have a lot of little tiny bits of clay all over the table here. So I'll show you the easiest way. Clay will always stick to other clay. So I have some yellow here so I can show you, but if you just roll your clay along the table in any place where you have little tiny crumbs, it will just pick them right up. 
Once your items are baked, there's a couple things you can do to finish. If you want to, you can sand them um, and make them nice and smooth. You can add a varnish or Mod Podge or shellac, something like that. But I do warn you that if you put those on, all of these little imperfections and nail marks and fingerprints in the back are going to be magnified and really, really obvious to see. I usually just kind of leave mine how they are. If I am making something like jewelry, I could put a little jewelry hook in here before I bake it. Um, I might put some varnish on there just to keep it stronger. And it does look more like a professional finished product if it has a little bit of gloss on it. But it's completely up to you. You do not have to do that. Thank you so much for joining us for Art Not Craft today. We would love to see what you made. If you'd like to follow us here on YouTube, you can see lots of other art and science tutorials, and you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tewksbury L-I-B. Have a wonderful day.